Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. A while ago I made a video using this ultrasonic distance sensor where I made a pellet monitor for my home to monitor the levels of the pellets in my pellet boiler that I used to heat my home and that worked relatively well and it's been working uh, quite nicely since so I, I can show you here in home assistant that it shows the current pellet level and it's been relatively reliable in the past period to show me the uh, level of pellets that I have. But in that video, many of you commented that I should have instead used one of these. This is the VL53LOX time of flight sensor that uses lasers to measure distances instead of the sound that the other sensor uses and i've ordered a couple of them and in this video we will take a look at how we can connect them with arduino and how we can also connect them to esp home so we can also measure the uh, pellet levels as uh, with the ultrasonic monitor and before we dive into the details of how this works i want to take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor a tool that has truly revolutionized the way we design electronics altium designer and altium 365. altium 365 is not just any platform it's where the world designs electronics, integrating all aspects of electronic development to help teams deliver better products faster than ever. Imagine connecting directly to your design platform from your favorite tools without any hassle, sharing real-time project updates, and even collaborating seamlessly with your mechanical team. Plus, with features like transparent design reviews, efficient library and data management, and even supply chain management, you can ensure that everyone from design to procurement is on the same page. So, if you are looking to change your electronic design process and deliver quality products faster, check out Altium Designer and Altium 365. The way that this sensor works is it uses infrared laser light to shine a beam and then uh, measure out the reflection and figure out what's the time that it took the light to travel to and back and that with some processing indicates the distance that it traveled. You can see this uh, on the camera that uh, we have a blinking light and that's from the measuring and it only works on a certain angle because it's really focused so you can see if i move it slightly out of the way we no longer see the light and on the opposite side we have a tiny receiver i don't know if i can show this better without using a microscope and to connect it with the microcontroller the sensor connects over i square c so i have v in and ground connected to 3.3 uh, volts and ground on the node mcu and i have scl connected to d1 and i have sda connected to d2 on the node mcu so let's zoom out to see that and here is how it's connected so 3.3 and ground on the far left and then D1 and D2 connecting to the I square C pins on the sensor. The sensor is really tiny. So if I compare it to the node MCU, you see that it's really small measuring about a centimeter by a centimeter and a half uh, on the development board while the sensor itself, it's like really small. On the back side, there are some components that are required to control the chip and we also have two more pins that we are not using at the moment so i have nothing connected on them and that's gpio one so we can have an output coming in from that sensor to trigger something and then we have the uh, x uh, shot so we can use that if we have multiple sensors like this uh, because they're all running on address 29 in i2c we can choose to I enable a certain sensor and just get the measurement from that sensor. The maximum range that the sensor can detect is about a meter. So I have it here pointed out to the wall that has, it's about meter and a half, two meters. It's saying that it's out of range, but as soon as I place my hand in front of the sensor, you can see that we are getting the measurement with the Arduino code. I'm using the default example that came with the Adafruit library for the sensor. So this is the VL53LOX sensor. And you can see that as I move my hand away from the sensor, the distance increases. And if I remove it completely, then it goes out of range. I think that the maximum I can go to is about, so a meter and 20 centimeters and it really depends if i'm hitting the 
angle or not, but I think that's where the maximum is. It works reliably well in distances that are closer. So like in the case that we used for the pellet monitor, I think that the furthest that we need to measure is about 80 centimeters, which should be perfect for this. And on the low range, similar to the ultrasonic sensor, it gets tricky on the really close distances. So anything below three centimeters is just uh, measured as three centimeters. So you can see I have it as touching and it says about three centimeters. So, but once we go further, it gets correct and it measures the right distances. Now, this is definitely very useful and we can already build a lot of projects with it. But in order to replicate the pellet level monitor that we did with the ultrasonic sensor, we need to connect this thing to ESP home. So let's do that next. And here is the now time of flight version of the pellet monitor compared to the actual pellet monitor that I have installed on my pellet boiler. You can see as I move my hand outwards, it reduces the level until it reaches certain um, threshold. And then when it goes out of range, it will drop down to zero. So I'm trying to figure out where the beam is. So you can see I can vary it depending on the distance. And the closer I get, the fuller it gets until uh, when it's over a few centimeters, it always counts this as full. And I can show you the code that does that. And it's here. So I have the sensor running on address 29 and it's updating every one second. And that value from that distance sensor is then used in this template sensor that uh, translates it to the level where same as with the pellet uh, version, I'm using the equivalent of the map function from Arduino, where anywhere between 10 centimeters and 80 centimeters, I map it to a percentage. I'm going to have all of the code and everything I've used linked down below. So if you want to check it out, in the meantime, I'm going to continue working on making a standalone version of this sensor. So if you are interested in that, then be sure to subscribe below, uh, like the video if you liked it, and I'm going to see you all in the next one. Cheers.